Hello, my name is Wesley Aston, and thank you for watching my series on how I shoot and edit my time lapses. So for this portion, we're going to go over using Adobe After Effects and how I use that to render out my time lapse videos. Now, if you're not familiar with Adobe After Effects, you'll definitely want to check out some tutorials and see what all I can do because there's so much more than just what I use it for. So first off, I have prepared my raw files already using LR Time Lapse, which is in one of my other videos. If you're not sure and haven't used that program before, check that video out. That'll help you out. So first off, let's just start with a little bit of After Effects. You've got all these different windows, which are your panels, and you can change your workspaces if you want to change the layout of things. And that's just part of Adobe. Adobe will do that in a handful of their programs. But we're going to start off here with the Project tab. Um, then you can see different tabs that we use to inside those panels. But under the Project tab, we're just going to come in here and get our files inserted into here. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to double click right here and it'll automatically open up a folder, which then I sort through and go find where I've saved my raw sequence. So I'm in here and I just want to select the very first file. Um, you'll see down here it says uh, sequence options. I want to make sure that the camera raw sequence is checked. If I only do one, it's just going to import one file, but I want the whole sequence. So everything in in this file, it's going to see if there's missing files, it'll it'll warn you and it'll cause some problems for your time lapse. So make sure you haven't deleted any files you've got from the start to the finish. And once all that's selected, I'm just going to hit import. So this brings open Camera Raw and it's showing all the edits I've already made with using LR time lapse. However, if you haven't used that program, right now is your chance to go through and make your edits and change up everything that you want and every change you do here will follow along with each other file in your sequence so I only have to edit one file with this one so I'll just hit OK and it brings that in right here but I need to create a composition with it so composition is this little icon right down here it says create a new composition I'm actually just gonna grab a hold of that file drag it right down there to composition it's created a new composition which will show up here in this window. Of course, it's a lot of raw files, so it can take a little bit of time. And this right here is my timeline. So I can kind of go through to see what it's going to look like. But again, you have to wait for every one of those raw files to load. Even if you wanted to preview it in real time, it, it'll take a while. And your computer's got to have some pretty serious power for that. So the next step that I do is I change the composition settings. So I come over here, make sure my composition is selected. I'm going to go up to Composition, and then Composition Settings. I'm going to rename my file, just so it's easier to track. So I'm going to name it LT. Actually, let's do TL01. It's for Time Lapse 01. And through here, you can change the size you want your composition to be. I'm just going to change it to 1920 at 1080. And then keep it at 30 frames a second. And I can see that it's going to be about 16 seconds long. And we'll just hit OK. And now you see that I've got this big old border around it. Well, th what this is, is it's changed. This is my composition now versus this is the actual size of my photos. So you see, I've got a lot of resolution to work with here. So there's a lot of different things you can do. So the next thing I do, though, is I want to make sure this guy fits into my composition. So I'll right click on the background and come down here to transform and I want to fit to composition width so that'll resize it and keep the right aspect for your photos to fit your composition and of course I got to zoom in just a little bit here just so I can see it better and you'll see still I've got a little bit of border missing on the top and the bottom well that's because you're going from a photo aspect which is more like 4.3 versus a video aspect which is 16 by 9 and the downside is I can lose a little bit of my top or my bottom, but there's a few things you can do with that. One, make sure when you do shoot your photos and your time lapses that you have this in mind. So I can always just make sure I'm a little wider, that I'm not going to lose anything that's very important. The other thing you can do is maybe I still want to show a little bit of the bottom and, or, and a little of the top. Well, you can come through here with After Effects and add some keyframes and actually add some movement to that. So I'll show you a little bit of that right here. 
So down here on this bottom panel, this shows my composition name. If it isn't highlighted here, then you want to just double click it and it'll open up down here. But because it's the only thing I'm working on, it's right here. So come over to this little arrow here, it's opening up some options for me. And these little stopwatches, they're little spots where I can add a keyframe. So what I'm going to do is two different things. I'm going to adjust the movement and I'm going to adjust the size of it too. So first off, let's just make sure that we're set at the very beginning. And I want to come in and I'm going to reset this guy to back where I was, fit in the composition width. And let's move it a little tired so I can see more of the top. So I'm at the beginning and this is going to be kind of my start point. I want to come in here and click that little guy so it's added a keyframe to this section. And I might end up changing the scale of it too, so let's add one of those also. If I don't end up changing that, it's not a big deal, but it's there. If I don't want it, then I can just uncheck it and get rid of it. So now what I'm going to do is go clear to the end. Got to take a little second for it to load up that picture. And then I'm going to make my adjustment. So now I can kind of come in here. I've added a little bit of the bottom, but you know what? I'm going to add a little bit of size to it also. So I'm going to grab that corner and I'm holding down shift also to keep the aspect. And I'm going to go just a little bit more here. And now what that does, by automatically making an adjustment, it'll automatically add another keyframe for me. So it's auto automatically added those right there. And I don't have to worry about making another one. Now if I undo that stopwatch, well it's going to kill the adjustment. It's going to get rid of the keyframes, but it's going to keep this very last step that I'm at. So the only way I can really preview this is as I scroll this around, you can see the box, how it's moving. It'll kind of give you an idea of what that motion is going to be but I can't really preview it very fast with After Effects. You can if you wait for a preview to render, but it can take some time. But I'm just kind of stepping through so I can kind of get an idea of what's going to happen here. So I'm kind of fine with that. I'm happy with that. And next thing I'm going to do is probably save this just in case. As you get through and make a handful of things and a handful of changes, you might want to save what you're doing just because you never know what's going to happen. You might lose, you might crash, you're, because this program does take up a lot of power and a lot of memory. It can cause some problems. So always good to save your projects. I'm just going to name it test and I at least have that. Now the next thing I want to do, because I'm fine with this one, I'm ready to render it out, but I'm not going to show you how to render just yet. I'm going to show you what else I can do by adding another time lapse in here. So I'm just going to double click back over here on my side panel. And let's go find another one and import this guy. So I've got a whole nother one. I've already edited it through LR time lapse yet again. And so it's, it's fine. I don't need to make any adjustments, but I can if I want. Do the same exact steps. Drag it down to comp make a new composition. Let that guy load in. But as it's loading, I could still go up and change the composition settings. So this one, I'm just going to leave WJA02. And you see the resolution's a bit higher on this one. This one was shot with a Sony A6300. and But I'm still going to knock it down to a HD resolution. And still at 30 frames a second. This one's going to be 22 seconds long. And then once I've done that, I want to right click, hit transform. And add my, or just fit to the composition width. And this one, I'm not going to add any extra motion to it, but I just want to see a little more of the bottom on this one. So I just got to make sure that it fits just right and it fits in the frame. If I'm over a little bit, well, then my render is going to show this side. So we just want to make sure that it's covered. And I'm fine with that. This one will play through and won't have any of that extra movement or zooming or any of that stuff, but I'm totally fine with that. Now, if I wanted to go back to the other one, I, I've got it here still opened up. So I can make adjustments as I want through the two of them. So next is going to rendering. So for rendering, you have a couple of different options. One, of course, is just using After Effects Render Queue. I don't think it gives you as many options or as easy of options as Media Encoder does. But if I want to just add it to the render queue here, I can go through and mess around with those settings, check it out, and find out if it works better for you. 
But what I'm going to show you is how to do it to MIDI encoder instead. So I want to make sure both my compositions are selected. File, export. We're going to go to add to MIDI encoder queue. And it'll put them in there for me. And from here, basic layout. You know, this is in case you want to just render out files. I don't even have to use After Effects. I don't have to use Premiere. I can just have some video files and change the type of codec they are um, just in this program. Add all sorts of files in, render them out to different things, and do a whole lot of them all at once. So with these two in here, we're going to just do some basic stuff. I want to select them both, and I'm going to change my preset. So the preset set is a match source high bit rate, which might work for your current project. But in here, if I'm going to create a master file, I actually want to change it over and maybe do a QuickTime. With a QuickTime file, on Windows, I don't have the option of doing a ProRes, but on a Mac I do. So on a Mac, I pick the ProRes under the video codec. But for Windows, I come down here and we'll pick a Photo JPEG instead. And then the next thing I want to do is come down for the basic video settings. I'm going to match the source because it automatically starts out at 720 by 480. Match the source. It's going to match it to what I made it in After Effects, which is 1920 by 1080. Now, if I uncheck this box, I can come in and adjust it if I want. So let's say I'm going to do it for, I just want more of a proxy file. I'm going to do it 1280. And by having this link together, it automatically keeps my aspect. If I unclick that, then I can do each one individually. So now it's made it a square and I could tell it to scale to fill instead. So now I've just got a square with it, but I want to keep it at what I was at originally. So I changed that back to scale to fit. I want to hit match source and we've got it back. Now you can at least adjust your quality. Sometimes I'll drop down to 90%. Instead, it does make the file size a little bit smaller, which can help just depending on what you're doing with it. So that one, I would just hit OK after I'm done, and it's changed them both. However, say I want to do it for uploading to Instagram instead or to YouTube. I'm going to change it to H.264, which is an MP4, and come down here to Match Source just to make sure. But I am actually can change the bitrate settings on this, which I can't do with the other files because they have a preset one. So for Instagram, I kind of keep it lower. I can see that it's 20 megabytes. And even Instagram, I'm going to drop this down to 1280. I can even drop it down a little more because they don't show very big files. But, you know, hey, I'd like to at least keep a little bit of my resolution with it. And by that, I want to make sure it's linked. And you see that it wasn't, so i got to do it. So it's uh, 1280 by 720. That'll keep my aspect there. Now if I keep that link, it'll automatically save as I change it. Come back down here, and this bit rate you can change if you want. So this gives you a lot higher resolution, or I should say compression rate's a bit better. And you see that my estimated file size will change as I adjust that. So if I go down lower, you see that we're at 27 megabytes when it's at... You know, 10 puts us at 20. If I go up to, let's go all the way, 50, I'm at 97. So again, it's something that, depending on what you're doing with your project, you want to adjust that. Even when you do your bitrate encoding, a lot of people use the two-pass. I haven't felt a need for it yet, but sometimes I do it. Now for YouTube, there's some other options you can do. You can manually set these, or you can come up to the presets, and there's already all these presets made out. Even some that I've made myself and just saved them. But if I want to go down to YouTube, it's in alphabetical order here. So I've got to scroll clear down to the bottom. 1080 automatically changes it back to my regular resolution for HD. And it's changed a couple of things and preset these already. It puts it at 16 and 16. And I can trust that and use that. Or if sometimes I'll make it a little bit higher just because I want to make sure that when somebody watches this on YouTube, then it looks good. But once I'm done, I'm just going to hit OK. And now it's made the two changes. If I have a preset that I've already made and saved, I come over here, grab it, and go and just drag it right there. And it automatically changes it to that preset I've already done. 
Same with, I think, the YouTube ones. You can go through and find them in here. Right there. Scroll down. Grab that. And we're back to the YouTube again. So a couple of different options for you to adjust in here. But now the next thing is changing to where I want it to save. So I still have them both highlighted. I'm just going to click on one of the links. We're just going to tell it to go here under stock video. Select folder so it's changed them both. And now all I have to do is just hit play and wait. And once it renders through, it'll take a little bit of time, especially on time lapses. Uh, this guy will tell me down here. We're about 20 minutes. It's slowly gaining. But I figure for a time lapse in HD, usually I give it at least 30 minutes. And that'll all depend on your computer processing power and your memory also. So for each one, that's going to take close to 30 minutes for this one. So let's see how they look. All right, now I've sped this up just a little bit to check it out. And you see how that movement I've added in those keyframes change it up a bit. Here's my other one that I didn't change any keyframes to it, but I did shoot it on a slider. And it looks pretty awesome. So I hope these videos helped you out. And if you'd like to learn more about how to shoot a time lapse and use a slider and even use LR time lapse, check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.